Hi everyone and welcome to the Free Range Diva. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. Today uh, I was tagged. Um, it's a green beauty tag and I believe it was started by Reagan Hart. But my dear friend Wendy from My Life Wendy uh, tagged me to do this. She did such a great job on it and was so much fun that I wanted to try it myself. So today is going to be a little bit more relaxed, still be a little bit more entertaining. I'm actually going to be doing my nails at the same time that I'm, do, that I'm talking to you. Uh, <clears throat> and it's late in the afternoon and time to chill a bit. So I've also got a nice glass of wine as well. So hopefully this will be entertaining. And uh, if it's not... Then I have a video next week coming up about fermentation, and that is going to knock your socks off. Okay, first question. I forgot to put my contacts in, so I'll be using ye old reading glass or my glasses. When did you switch to Green Beauty and why? Those of you who have been with the channel for uh, a while know that I had a... Um, really bad, uh, massive allergic reaction back in 2014 uh, that left my skin so sensitive that I could not use any of my beauty products or shampoos. It actually started in the scalp with a burning in the scalp um, and then just progressed to a burning over my entire body. So I had to throw out all of my philosophy. Yes, I used to be a philosophy girl. And uh, I think the first products that I started using um, what, that I could use was a very mild olive oil soap um, from Kiss My Face and honey. Couldn't use any moisturizers uh, or anything like that or oils, even they burned. So that's how I started. And so I figured as long as I was changing, uh, you know, I had to change everything, that I might as well try and go a more natural route because I was already using uh, natural products for deodorant and I believe it toothpaste as well at that time. Do you remember your first green makeup product and did it work well for you? Yes I do remember it was uh, um, it was foundation from Alima Pure. It was their um, satin uh, mineral foundation and I'm not exactly sure how I heard about them, but uh, I tried them and really, really uh, loved the way that makeup performed. I still have, I still have some and use it quite often. It also, I remember, I really liked uh, the way that that they had so many color selections, and getting a shade match for, especially for foundation, was um, really always really really difficult for me. So that. Uh, foundation started it all. All right, let's see what's the next question. Have you noticed a change in your skin or overall health since making the switch? Well, yes. <laughs> um, anyone who's been with me from the beginning has can probably, you know, like see the difference as well. Um, my skin is nowhere near as sensitive. Even before I had that allergic reaction, my skin used to be really, really really sensitive. So um, it is not that way at all. Additionally, um, my skin isn't as congested. I used to have very uh, normal, now let me see, oily to combination skin. And then in the colder months, it would just get really, really dry and sensitive and oily at the same time. <laughs> it was quite odd. Um, and I remember as a kid, or as a young person, say when I got into my um, 20s, uh, all the way up until my early 30s, people would always comment me on how nice my skin looked. Uh, and then people stopped commenting me at all. <laughs> I wasn't getting any more comments because my skin had gotten, because it was so sensitive, I couldn't do things like um, masks or exfoliating or anything like that. So I had a lot of blackheads. I would get a hormonal breakout, so there was uneven, you know, scarring and things like that. And um, that, you know, continued uh, really until I, you know, passed when I moved back to California from the East. I used to live on the East Coast. 
And when I moved back, I was still having issues because the water was so, you know, I just wasn't used to it. The water here is very hard and drying, and the weather was also very drying. So I was, it was always a, a struggle. Well, now my skin is much, much calmer, and it, it uh, you know, is even. Today I'm not wearing foundation, just some concealer. Uh, so my skin stays quite even, and it's not nearly as oily, particularly in the T-zone. And, um, yeah, and, and it's overall much healthier. I mean, I'm aging, obviously, but I feel like I'm aging well. And I notice that my skin is not getting particularly thin. Um, you know, I still have a lot of, as you can see, maybe you can't see. I still have plenty of um, whatever that is that keeps your skin bouncy collagen, I guess. So yes, uh, there has been a dramatic and a very welcome change. Next, is there anything that you wish was different about the green beauty space? Yeah, I do. Um, sometimes uh, watching green beauty bloggers and you know, like getting reading on Instagram, going, you know, scrolling through my Instagram feed, I will see um, a lot of products, people talking about products and more products and more products. And it's like every other week there's a new green beauty, you know, it company and the great products that they offer. And, uh, you know, there's a big expansion in the luxury end of the market. And there's also expand, you know, big expand, expansion in sort of the... Um, not really lower end, but more uh, sort of handmade uh, end of the market as well. And if I could see something change about that, I wish that bloggers and um, you know people on Instagram or whatever would spend a little bit more time talking about the why behind uh, green beauty being an important because it's a it's a lifestyle uh, choice that has to do with, um, in my estimation, uh, better health, getting toxins and chemicals and things that negatively impact our health, skin health and body health out of our, you know, medicine cabinet, out of our life, if, and avoiding as much of that as we possibly can. It's also a choice to have a positive impact on the environment. It's a choice to say no to companies that pollute the environment, no to companies that continue to pump their toxic chemicals into our lakes and streams and insist that they're safe even though we know that they're not, and no to companies that continue to test on animals. Even though some parent companies of green beauty companies do test on animals, the vast majority of green beauty companies themselves do not. It's about sustainability and um, you know being responsible about the pro the the, uh, the ingredients that you harvest, and uh, quality, making sure that you're not uh, doing things that are going to, you know, destroy uh, um, or throw the nature out of balance, the natural balance that that we you know have among the natural world. Uh, there are there is one company in particular that comes to mind who last year they have a very popular um, body product body oil that includes a specific type of vanilla in it and uh, I guess wherever they buy their crop their vanilla crop from there was a problem it was I don't know if it was weather related or pest related but it wasn't available so rather than you know put in a cheap substitute or um, you know, so, uh, hire from somewhere else and, and possibly throw the ecology uh, system out of balance, they just discontinued the product until they could get the vanilla that they wanted. And that's the kind of thing that happens in green beauty world that doesn't necessarily happen in the more uh, conventional world. If they can't get an ingredient over here, they will go over there and get it, even if it means that this is going to ne neg negatively impact the ecology of that area, or even um, making sure that 
the people that are making that and harvesting that ingredient are being paid a living wage. These are all, I guess it's, it's, it's a very political uh, decision to support uh, the green beauty industry and I would love to see more bloggers talking about that. Because, you know, fair wage and, and not polluting the environment is important, as well as taking good care of our health. What is the number one ingredient you avoid in cosmetics? Um, gosh. Personally, because I have an allergy and a, and a sensitivity, particularly a touch sensitivity to corn and in its derivatives, that's going to be the number one product that I avoid. There are a lot of, you know, like products that are less than desirable uh, in conventional material, you know, in conventional products, but Specifically, I mean, anything that has any kind of corn derivative, I don't care how natural it is, is a no-go for me. What are your favorite three makeup products you've discovered thus far? And then they want the, your favorite three skincare products. So we'll start with makeup products first. The Lily Lolo Mascara. Um, mm, let's see, what else, what else, what else? I... Uh, nah. I'm looking over at my makeup stash to see what jumps out. <laughs> That's definitely uh, a big one. Gosh, what else is over there? Um, okay, I know. Um, my Lily Lolo Mascara. My um, purple eyeliner from Honest Beauty, which I think has been discontinued. And number three would have to be, hands down, the Jane Iredell Daytime Eyeshadow Palette. I will insert a close-up of that so you can see the gorgeousness of those colors because I use that palette almost every day that I wear makeup. So yeah, those would have to be my favorite three makeup products. My favorite three skincare products, that's really easy. That would be the, uh, oh, <laughs> the cleansing balm from Mahalo Skincare, uh, the mermaid mask from Leolani, and the uh, oh boy, there's a toss up. For, there's a there's a big toss up for the for the for number three. But okay, uh, the Wamisa uh, masks, the the gel masks from Wamisa. So yeah, those would have to be my. Uh, sorry, adjusting. Those would have to be my favorites. Okay, next, what brands do you really want to try but still haven't? I'm going to take this off of skincare because really there aren't a lot of brands out there that I want to try that I just feel like, ooh, um, whoa, wait, yes, there is. <laughs> yes, there is. Uh, for makeup, uh, Elia has um, a foundation and a uh, mascara that I really want to try. And then uh, as far as the others, um, I would love to try, even though these are not unknown brands to me, um, I only, I've only used one product from Mahalo, and that is this beauty, the, uh, the Unveil Cleansing Balm. And I would love to try more from that line. Um, I would also love to try more from Leolani because I've only used this beauty, their uh, mermaid mask, and I really would love to find to try some of their oils, uh, facial oils and, and toners um, and cleansers because they have a, a, a really a huge line. Uh, yeah, I feel often feel drawn to products from the tropics for some reason. My skin responds really well to them. So yeah, those would be uh, Elia Beauty, um, Mahalo and Leolani. What type of products do you buy the most of? Well, <laughs> you guys know it's going to be skincare. I um I tend to buy um skincare more than anything else with um toners <laughs> being uh my biggest problem and also masks. I do like I do have a fair amount of masks as well. It just it's I you know, one of the things that attracted me to philosophy as I mentioned I used to be a philosophy girl was their idea of makeup optional skin. Having skin that looks so, um, you know, hydrated and glowy and, and plump uh, that you don't, and even, 
that you do not uh, need makeup. And that's always kind of been, because as a, as a teenager, uh, I didn't have a whole lot of makeup choices that would work with this complexion. Uh, everything, the foundations were pink based. <laughs> which looks ridiculous on me. Um, it wasn't, I think, until Bobby Brown that... I take that back. Fashion Fair and I think Flory Roberts both had um, sort of yellow-based foundations, but anytime I got near a Fashion Fair product, I would break out. And Flory Ro Roberts wasn't that easy to come by. It wasn't like today where you could just go online and order stuff. Uh, so makeup just wasn't a thing. I mean, I, I was always involved in theater and I wore stage makeup and I actually had better luck finding uh, matches in stage makeup than I did in street makeup. So, uh, but once that stuff comes off, the last thing you want to do is put more makeup on. So, so, yeah, so I just kind of, you know, like gravitated more towards skincare, that being that, that take care of the skin and you won't need it. And uh, that's always been my uh, philosophy. Next, uh, do you like trying new skincare products or do you keep a certain routine? Surprisingly enough, trying new skincare products still makes me nervous. I love it when I find something that's like the best thing, my skin loves it, I see results, and I just want to keep using it over and over again because when you have a history of having very reactive skin, you never know what you're going to put on and how your skin's going to you know, react to it. And so, uh, although, you know, part of this YouTube uh, world, um, being a part of that means that I do have to try more um, skincare than I normally would if I wasn't. Because, uh, but as a result of that, I would have never tried brands like Mahalo or Leolani if it wasn't for YouTube. So, did I answer that question? <laughs> uh, we'll just move on. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll be ta I'll be talking for like the next 20 minutes. All right. If you could only buy from one brand, if you could only buy from one brand, which one would you choose? Pick one for makeup and one for skin care. So if I could only buy from one brand for makeup, it's pretty easy. It would be Jane Iredale. Uh, every product that I have tried from her, I love. Uh, I love the amount of pigment that you get. I love the way the products perform, the way they last all day. And the only caveat is that her uh, lip products, her lipsticks and glosses and things, tend to irritate my lips. But I recently tried one of her lip pencils. I got one of her lip pencils, and it doesn't irritate. So um, if she, uh, I'd have to go back and check, but if she has a nice selection of lip pencils, then I could easily just apply those as lipstick and then put a um, you know a lip balm over it, over that. And that would be, you know, perfect, perfect. So Jane Iredale, definitely for makeup and for skincare. Uh, I, pro I probably, the one that, that I use the most often would have to be Devita. I'm most familiar with their skincare line, all with, you know, like maybe one exception of the products. And I've tried almost all of their anti-aging line and they all work great uh, and don't irritate my skin. So yeah, probably DeVita would have to be uh, my choice, which would mean that I would give up two of my Holy Grail products, which really makes me mad, but that would be my choice. What do you love about makeup and skincare? What do I love about makeup and skincare? Um, well, I think I've kind of answered that. Uh, I love the idea of, well, Skincare, obviously, you don't need to wear makeup. You can just have beautiful skin, uh, beautiful, soft, even, poreless, flawless skin, which we all want, which I don't have, but I'm striving to get there. And then uh, the thing that I love about makeup is you can just, like, enhance parts of your face and play down other parts of your face. So I tend to like to enhance my eyes, um, you know, and, and uh, so that they come forward. But, and then there are other times where I really want to enhance my lips, uh, you know, like with a bold red lip or something and, you know, make the eyes recede back. So it's nice that you, you, you know, with makeup, you can do stuff like that. You can completely reinvent yourself if you want to with makeup. So that's fun. And then the last question, what's your favorite thing about the green beauty community? Um, the people that I met, I mean, the, 
obviously, you know, talking with you guys in the comments, but also I've met some incredible um, women, um, Reagan Hart, Wendy, um, Marie from And the Color Green, Trish, Green Beauty, Trish. These are all um, really smart, uh, knowledgeable Mercedes from Lamour and La Musique, women that I have interacted with, um, gotten to know uh, outside of just watching their videos. And uh, I, I um, you know, that's been probably the most uh, rewarding thing is that there are a lot of uh, strong women in the green beauty community. There's a lot of strong women in the, uh, that make green beauty skincare and makeup as well. Uh, many of my favorite makeup lines are founded by strong, capable, intelligent women. So, yeah. Sisters. <laughs> okay, everybody. Whoo, that was, that was very thoughtful. I'm glad I did it. Uh, I hope that you got to know a little bit more about me and how I think about things um, and uh, how I wound up, you know, doing this, all of this. Uh, and um, hopefully, will I've given you some things to think about as well in your own green, green beauty journey because, as I said, uh, it's a lifestyle, it's a choice, it's a political statement, if you will. So um, it, it's... Um, it can be a lot more than just playing with makeup and skincare. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. And, and we all kind of uh, are on a journey of discovery about uh, what that means to each of us personally. Hope that made sense. Okay, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for today. As I said, my next video is, all gonna, is going to be about fermentation and gut health. So uh, if you want to see more about that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and click the notification bell so you won't miss it. And um, yeah, I thank you so much if you've subscribed. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I love having you and I love that you're out there watching. And until I see you again in my next video, I'm wishing all of you a wonderful day, a wonderful week. Take good care of yourselves and I will talk to you again very, very soon. Bye, everybody.